welcome to Western Reserve and the Blue Devils looking to, to kind of bounce back after a season that probably wasn't up to their standard last year. Ty, who do the Blue Devils bring back and, and who are they going to have to replace? Yeah, six and four is considered bad seasons over there in Western Reserve. That's how uh, successful this team has been. Um, it's a team that was actually pretty solid on offense, averaging just over 27 points per game, a little over 300 yards. Um, guys that are going to be returning, and first and foremost, is David Altier, and he's going to be the dynamic running back of Western Reserve. He started coming into his own, especially towards the end of the last season. I expect with a 10-game season ahead of him uh, and hopefully a full 10 game season under his belt. He's going to have a monster year as well as guys like David Ashburn at wide receiver, Dean Coleman on offensive line, Adam Wise on offensive line, just good solid seniors to build a program and an offense around and really good that you can insert pretty much a decent amount of quarterbacks in there. And they, they can find success within a system like that with solid seniors all around them. Um, and just looking all around at their offense, guys that, could also or guys that have been lost, excuse me. Uh, they lost uh, Russ Adair on running back, C.J. Berlin Bates offensive line, Nick Avalos on quarterback, uh, Alex Mayorga wide receiver. So I mean, a couple of guys that are lost, but I mean, really, most of this team is returning, and a lot of young guys on the on this team last year that are going to have another year under their belt, but really kind of flying under the radar right now. And I think that's what Western Reserve likes. Yeah, and you can't talk about Western Reserve without talking about David Altier. And, Coach, you know you've coached against him. He's probably gets a lot of attention on the scouting report when you're playing Western Reserve. Talk about what makes him so special and what makes him one of the highlight players in the whole conference. Yeah, I, I think the way that he just kind of sees the field is one of the things that makes him most dangerous. Um, he's kind of a guy that can attack you multiple different ways. Uh, he's worked really hard in the weight room to be able to have some of that power as a running back. Um, but he's also got that speed on the edge, too, where if he can get just outside of that defensive end, you know, you're going to have a long day chasing him down the field. Um, you know, I, I think everybody in the league is probably a little relieved not to see C.J. Berlin Bates uh, on the offensive line again this year because, you know, first of all, just a, a tremendously huge human being. Um, and, and second of all, you know, just a heck of a football player. So it's going to be interesting to see how Coach Lude approaches, you know, replacing him and, and dealing with maybe a, a little smaller offensive line than what the Western Reserve community has been used to having these last few years. And with a team that's so used to dominating on the ground game, that offensive line is going to be, you know, leaned on a lot. No, you're right. And I think it's important to note, too, that Coach Lude comes over from being on Coach Johnson's staff at Salem. And so we started to notice that we were seeing some of those Salem wrinkles into the Western Reserve uh, playbook last year. Looking, too, at this defense of uh, Western Reserve, it was also a defense that wasn't bad. 29th in the area was ranked, allowed just under 24 per game. Uh, returnees, of course, David Altira is a two-way player, plays defensive back. So does David Ashburn. Um, Brogan Beery, uh, junior linebacker, is a guy that watch for, as well as Caleb Durig, uh, senior linebacker for them that has great size and great tackling ability as well. Guys, of course, that they lost. Alex Mayorga was a linebacker that played both ways. Brock Miller, defensive back, or excuse me, My Mayorga was a defensive back, played both ways. Brock Miller was also a defensive back. Seth Phillips, uh, defensive line that they lost. So a couple pieces on defense, but like I said, this is a team that's very young and they're kind of going more linebacker heavy, it seems like, with the seniors outside of Altier and Ashburn, which they're going to have in the backfield, which are both going to be very, very good in that secondary uh, defensive backfield. But now looking at the linebackers, they have some more size there. They have some more experience. Uh, this is going to be a very good uh, second line of defense and very good tacklers uh, on that linebacker squad. Yeah, I think that's one of the first things that you always talk about when you talk about this Western Reserve program over the last couple, you know, five, ten years. Um, what you've always seen out of them traditionally has been extremely good linebacker play. And obviously Coach Hake did a great job with that. And I think that it's something that Coach Wood has wanted to uh, continue on there. Um, you see those big physical linebackers that can really move well and, and fill gaps in a hurry. I know this has nothing to do with their football, but Western Reserve is always looking fly on the football field, I must say. One of the best uniforms in the conference. I'm not going to take anything away from your Sebring Trojans. They look fly, too. But uh, Western Reserve, I just something about the white, blue, and red, it's just, it looks really slick. 
Yeah, it, it definitely does. And I think that they've done a good job over the past few years of, of kind of updating some of those uniform choices. And uh, I know that, you know, they're a, a community that's extremely proud of their football program. And, and so they're willing to come out and do some things. You know, they've changed the logo in the middle of the field a little bit. Uh, and, and those are things that matter to kids. Looking a little bit, too, at, at the schedule that they have, non-conference-wise, they open it up at Liberty August 20th. August 28th, they're at Warren JFK, and then September 3rd, home versus Brookfield. So, touring a little bit of the gray tier of the MVAC, as well as adding uh, Warren JFK to their uh, non-conference schedule. So, a very, uh, very interesting first three games of the season for Western Reserve, and it's going to test them right out of the gates, especially that uh, that Brookfield matchup September 3rd, I think. That's a tough slate. You got, you got uh, up and coming Liberty's team. You got JFK, everyone knows what they did last year. And then you got Brookfield, who's just going to beat you up and, and play you physical the whole night. Tough way to start the season, Coach. Yeah, not only for, for them, but for Springfield as well. You will get kind of that meat grinder of an opening three games. And, and it becomes real obvious right away what they're trying to do, and that's get themselves battle tested so that when they roll into our league schedule, um, you know they can they can be prepared for that, and then obviously hope to make long postseason runs as well. Um, I, th- I think it's going to be an interesting year for that. Uh, over the last two seasons, Western Reserve, if I if I remember correctly, has run into Springfield early in the playoffs both years. Um, so obviously they're they're trying to beef their schedule up in the non conference to prepare for that kind of a matchup again, but with the move to 16 teams in the playoffs, that may be a later matchup than we're used to this year if, if they both make it there and, and all things happen correctly. Opening up conference play, they start out September 10th at Jackson Milton, September 17th home versus Waterloo, September 24th home versus Mineral Ridge, October 1st at McDonald, October 8th at Springfield, October 15th home versus Sebring, and October 22nd at Lowville. And I mean, I think for anybody's sake, and anyone will go to tell you that September 10th at Jackson Milton game is one that everyone will circle on the schedule immediately. And that's yeah, a rivalry. Right. I mean, that's a traveling and, trophy, right? You're right. And and I think that that Western Reserve community has got some revenge on their mind this year. Uh, is, you know, they got knocked off last year. Coach Brode had the, the Blue Jays ready to go for that game. Uh, you know, guys like Frank Prosey and, and Sean Lingle really stepped up in that game and got the first win over, over the Blue Devils in, in quite some time. So... And I remember last year talking to Coach Brode during the coach's quarter season. And he said, you know, in the season before 2019, they started off really good. Then they lost to Western reserve. And that was one of the things to tailspin their season. They wanted to redeem themselves and, and take the next step. They definitely did that last season. And now Western reserve has a chance to kind of wash that taste out of their mouth a little bit. Yeah, it was almost like a tale of two seasons for uh, for Western Reserve in that first half and then the second half of uh, last year's season, it seemed like. And and the Blue Devils really, I think, um, need a, needed to uh, to really find uh, their defensive identity again. Um, and I think by getting these linebacker play and getting these linebackers experience, I think they're going to find that identity and get back to what Coach Seidel said they do best, and that's uh, – make very good linebackers, strong, talented linebackers that fill those gaps. And uh, I think that's where they're going to have their shine star, the uh, stars shine the brightest. I think this year, especially against that uh, Jackson Milton team, um, you're not going to see as much of a defensive uh, game back and forth. I think from Jackson Milton, as you saw from Western reserve. Unfortunately, we, we lost coach side. we'll try to get him back. You never know what, what's going on with, with the internet out there, man. the technical issues of, of, uh, having a live streaming show remotely. But when you talk about Western Reserve's conference schedule, Jackson Milton's one you circle. I got to imagine just because of what they were able to do against Springfield's defense last year with moving the ball and holding the ball, not being able to finish drives, but at least having about 18 minutes of, of ball possession in the first half, that's going to be a game you circle as well. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you look at the games before it, September 24th, home versus Mineral Ridge and October 1st at McDonald. You're going to be going through a little bit of a gauntlet in the middle of the season as well. Those are three tough opponents before they have to face Coach Seidel Sebring Trojans, uh, October 15th at Sebring. So, I mean, Western Reserve is going to be facing some tough competition too going forward. And you just going into that Sebring game too, and what Coach Seidel can be looking at, they might be pretty beat up going into that Sebring game after facing teams such as the Mineral 
Anchorage, your McDonald's, and your Springfields. And you, we already know that's going to be three very tough games. But I will say, if Western Reserve comes out with a 2-1 and one record or better, they're looking pretty pretty good for the playoffs then, I'd say, for a pretty high seed, I think. Well, some breaking news that Alliance has lost power. So that's why we lost Coach Seidel. He said he lost power in Alliance. So All of Alliance went under. A rare, <laughs> a rare power, a rare power outage in in the AV for AV eater country over there in Alliance. Uh, so yeah. we'll, we we definitely thank him for joining us. At least uh, you're helping us on for Seaburn, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> and helping us uh, preview some of these MVAC schools.